You know, it can be a silent killer, showing few signs or symptoms, and often women don't discover they have ovarian cancer until it's too late. So here, here to talk more about this disease is Dr. Molly Brewer, a gynecologic oncologist at the Yukon Health Center. Dr. Brewer, good morning to you. Thanks for coming in. You're very welcome. Let's start first of all with what causes ovarian cancer? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, in some women, we know that they have a mutation that predisposes them. In other women, and this is actually 90% of them, it's sporadic. That means that we see a mutation or a series of mutations, that's a hypothesis, um, and as a result of that, you get a pre, what we call precancer and then a cancer. The problem with ovarian cancer is it's inside, it's very hard to get to to study, and most of the cases that we see actually are far advanced. So to find out what precipitated it is very difficult. And of course, you, the sooner the better. We always know early detection, it gives you the greatest shot at, at fending something like this off. Absolutely. So what, what should women look for? Well, I think, you know, they used to call ovarian cancer the silent killer. And actually, there's been data for probably the last 10 years that has suggested that almost all women have symptoms, but they're symptoms that often masquerade as something else. They may look like a gallbladder problem or a urinary tract infection or something something with the large bowel or the small bowel or something in the stomach. So they can be ignored then or, or well, just thought or there's they, something else. Right. Or they may have a workup and they don't find anything. Mm. And at the end of the workup, somebody finally says, oh, let's get a CAT scan. And that's when they find it. All right. So what do you do then? Well, then, then most women have advanced disease. Yeah, yeah. So for women trying to get ahead of this, um, should they find out if they are susceptible? And, and if so, exactly who? I know you said some could be prone. Uh, who might be susceptible and most at risk? Well, I think there's, there's a subset of women who are at very high risk. And these are women that have a strong family history of early onset breast cancer, ovarian cancer. Um, they usually usually see them down one side of the family or down the other side of the family. And these are women that are at very high risk. These women need to see genetics, people who have expertise in finding genetic syndromes. And then there's a subset of women who have maybe a mother with ovarian cancer or a grandmother with ovarian cancer. Um, these are women who are at moderately increased risk. And then there are women that probably make up a good portion of sporadic. They may have had no children. They may have had a long history where they had uninterrupted cycles. Um, they didn't take birth control pills. Um, they either never got pregnant or got pregnant late. These are all kind of moderate risk factors. So really important to review your own personal medical history, maybe have a discussion with your doctor, find out if you are at risk. And like you said, this unfortunately can be a death sentence. So uh, I thought it was really encouraging to learn that UConn actually has some, some support groups. Well, I think, women. right. And th the thing about ovary cancer in particular is it's a lifelong issue. And so many of these women, they go through treatment, they come off treatment, they're in remission, they recur, they go back on treatment. And so we do have a support group for these women because it's very difficult. They, you know, the, they, most of them have a big surgery followed by chemotherapy, very high toxicity for many of these drugs. And, you know, it, it really interrupts their life. And well, so and support what, is something that they, they most definitely would need, I'm absolutely. sure. So we want to pass on some information. You can learn more about the Women's Cancer Support Group at Yukon Health Center. Just call 860-679-1144. Thank you so much, doctor. Really appreciate you coming in. Very welcome.